Hello, you're watching a very special 10th Parrot Reviews. As this is my 10th video, I've decided to play one of my favourite video games, Aqua Kitty Milk Mine Defender. Since I already told you it's one of my favourite games, is there really any point in going on and making a review? Well, I say why not? Otherwise, I'll have to call it Parrot Just Turns Up and Stomps Off Again, rather than Parrot Reviews. So, Aqua Kitty it is then. Let's dive in! Back in the 1980s, there was a game at the amusement arcades that I used to hand over a fair bit of money to. It was called Defender. It was absolutely hard as nails, and I never could get very far in it, but it looked and sounded absolutely amazing. Despite knowing full well I was wasting my money, I kept going back to it. The graphics, sounds and frantic gameplay were irresistible to me. But it was missing something. Cats! Yes, there were no cats in Defender. What were they thinking? An otherwise perfect game, Defender really could have been made even better with the addition of cats. Thankfully, we now have Aqua Kitty. And Aqua Kitty gives us 80s kids the underwater feline based Defender we never knew we always wanted. The action takes place underwater in a time of cats. And their tale goes like this. Due to a sudden shortage of milk, cats are having to find new sources. A source was found at the bottom of the ocean. You and your team of milk mining kittens are drilling down under the ocean seabed when all of a sudden there's a bit of an old attack from freaky mechanical sea creatures. It's up to you to defend the milk mining kittens and send those perpetrators on their way. As you make your way through the game, the story is told through little story images at the start and end of the levels. And as things unfold, well I don't want to give away the plot twist, but you get to find out just who is behind the whole dastardly business. As in Defender, the gameplay is a side-scrolling blastomer. And in a familiar way to Defender, the key to your side-scrolling is going to be that radar at the top of the screen. It shows exactly where the enemies are, shown as bluey coloured blips, and where your cat buddies are, shown as white blips. Your own kitty sub is shown as a yellow blip. As you play, you need to watch out for the blips when you hear a meow and see red and white blips making their way up towards the surface together. That's an enemy catnapping a kitty and you need to get there super quickly to rescue your feline buddy. There are a limited number of milk mining kittens and you need to keep as many of them as possible to stay in the game. Lose all your kitties and it's game over. Enemies take different amounts of damage, ranging from a single shot to... Okay, I admit, I'm not totally sure how many, but it's more than three. You have two modes of fire, your regular mode and turbo mode. Turbo mode seems to be around twice the power of regular fire, as some enemies that normally take two or three shots will be wiped out by a single turbo shot. As you play through the game, the amount of time you can fire in turbo mode gets upgraded. Power-ups include triple directional fire and extra little divers coming down to provide multi-fire. There's also a bomb that will launch out a spread of explosions when you pick it up, taking out almost everything within half a screen length of the sub. The triple directional fire is super useful if you end up turning up late to save a kitten and the enemy's already left the water. Normally, you wouldn't be able to do anything except watch them fly away, but if you have the triple directional thingy, then you can blast catnappers out of the sky. The PC version of Aqua Kitty has two different game modes, Classic, in easy or normal difficulty, or Arcade mode. In Classic, it's a sort of career mode type thing, where it saves your progress across the various levels, and you can come back at any time to conquer them and eventually clear them all. In Arcade mode, there's no saving anything other than the high score. You just have to clear as many levels as you can to go score chasing. 
Actually, technically, there are three game modes, because there's also an infinite mode called Infinite Espresso. In the infinite mode, you're just blasting an endless wave of all different types of enemy to see how long you can survive. Comparing it to Defender, the pace, well, it can be much slower. But don't let that fool you into thinking this game is easy or any less action-packed. The first four or five levels are pretty easy to get through, especially in easy mode, but after that it will start to get a lot more challenging. Nine lives would come in handy here, but in this game you only get five. If you do end up finding a level too tough, perhaps it's time to bring in a friend and play some co-op mode. Playing Aqua Kitty in co-op, you get to play through the same levels, only with a friend. On PC, you can use a combination of controllers and keyboard if you don't have multiple controllers lying around. But we played it with a wired Xbox 360 controller and a wired Xbox One controller. On the level select screen, I just pressed the A button on the second controller, then it joined up and we were ready to go. It worked clawlessly. User interface design is really clear, and you can navigate your way around menus easily with a keyboard or controller. The level select screen has a lot on it, but I think it presents all of the information clearly. The buttons you need to press are shown in the relevant sections. Your attention is drawn to the right places and it all makes sense. The end game user interface helps you to easily see how many lives you got left and any other details you might need, like the current wave number or chain bonus count. When a milk miner is being taken away, the radar flashes around the blips you need to chase to make sure that your attention is drawn to it. The most difficult part of the in-game UI is when you're in arcade mode and that whole power-ups with gems system. I found the purchasing a bit confusing and I'm never sure how many gems I've got or how many I need. Having the shop in there as part of the action doesn't really work for me as I find it a bit too stressful to have to look around and figure out the purchasing stuff at the same time I'm blasting and trying to avoid getting blasted. I'm sure a lot of people won't have the same problem with it, but this is one part about Aqua Kitty that I struggled with. That said, it's not exactly a catastrophe. Other than that, everything flows like milk into a cat's mouth. There are little touches everywhere that pull you in and reinforce the themes nicely. On the main menu, the thing that shows you which option you've selected is a kitty in a diving suit. On the level select, the selected item is highlighted by a blue glow and also a lovely little animated boat. There's a little idle animation on the player 2 kitty and just a bunch of little details like bunnies and crabs on the level map. At the end of the level, if you've lost any of your kitten buddies, it shows them on the UI as pictures on the side of milk cartons. The themes are really strong. And right from the first screen of the game, you feel like you're experiencing the game's universe and it does everything it can to keep you there. That includes the sound effects and music. On the main menu, the confirmed sound's got a little cat mew mixed into it. In game 2, sounds are suitably catty and watery and the frequencies are split up in ways that mean you can easily pick out the warnings and alerts above the firing, music and explosions. On their own, some of the impact sounds could sound a bit harsh, but when you play them with the music, it all fits together perfectly. On the subject of music, if you want to, you can buy the entire Aqua Kitty soundtrack from its composer's Electric Cafe. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's the kind of meowsical fun that'll leave you feline fine. So, what do I think of Aqua Kitty? Let's face it, I gave away the premise already when I said it was one of my favourite games. And it's one of my favourite games because it's just so lovingly crafted and perfectly put together. If this sounds like your cup of milk, Aqua Kitty is available on practically everything except the toaster. Xbox 360, Xbox One, Switch, PS4, PlayStation Portable, PC, HAL 9000. There's a good chance that whatever you play games on, you'll be able to get Aqua Kitty for it. The price varies depending on the platform, but on Steam PC you can take home an Aqua Kitty for around 8 Canadian dollars. Absolute bargain. Until next time, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Feel free to like it, subscribe and bend your knees in time. And you never know, I might make some more.
Goodbye. Bye.